Hey, what's up, guys? So I was asked if the Dynamite Gorilla Sublimation Ink could be used in the Ecotank 2720. And the answer is, of course. And we actually have sublimation ink with bottles designed to fit all Ecotank printers. So in this video, I'll be setting up the Epson ET 2720 for sublimation printing. Now, the Ecotank printers are the easiest printers to set up for sublimation printing. All you have to do really is follow the instructions on the quick setup sheet, but instead of using the ink that comes with it, we're going to be using sublimation ink. First thing we're going to do is get it out of the box and get this tape off. After that, we're going to fill the printer with sublimation ink. Now, of course, in this case, we're going to be using Dynamite Gorilla sublimation ink. And you can find that on the website and I'll put a link in the description. Now after we get it filled with ink, we're going to plug it in and power it on. We're going to select English for the language. And then it's going to go to a screen that reads, see the start here, bundled with printer or website, the complete initialization. And it's going to instruct you to hold the help button down for five seconds. Then you'll see another screen telling you to make sure there's ink in the tanks. And then we'll press the start button to begin the initialization. Once it completes the initialization, it's going to prompt you to do an alignment and a nozzle check. And after we do that nozzle check, we'll go ahead and set up the Wi-Fi. And once the Wi-Fi is set up, we'll go to the computer and install the driver. Okay, now that we got the printer set up and ink added and the Wi-Fi set up, we need to go to Epson and download the drivers. You can use the CD that came with the printer, but we're just going to go ahead and get it from the website. So we're going to go to the Epson.com uh, website. We're going to go to search and we're going to type in our model number. In this case, it's the 2720. And then what'll pop up is the uh, Epson EcoTank 2720 printers. Um, it doesn't matter which one of these you go to. What you're going to do is just click on the on the one that says support. And then we're going to click on drivers, and then we're going to download the printer driver. Uh, in this case, I'm going to download it to my desktop. Go ahead and open that. We'll click yes. And we'll let it extract. Now, I'm not going to set this up as my default printer. Um, I'm so used to unchecking automatically update software. On the Ecotanks, it doesn't really matter. You can go ahead and update the software. It's not like um, the other models where if you have a chipless firmware, updating the software uh, would overwrite the the chipless firmware and put the Epson firmware on there and it'll render the uh, chipless firmware inactive. Um, you can keep this one on automatically update. It doesn't really matter. So we'll go ahead and keep it on. Click OK. And we'll continue to set up the driver here. And being that we already set up the Wi-Fi earlier or set up the printer on our network earlier, it's going to find it and it should go ahead and just install the driver here pretty quickly. All right, so it found the printer. So we'll go ahead and click OK. It's going to install that print. So the uh, driver installation is complete. So we'll go ahead and click OK. So I'm going to further set up the uh, printer driver here so that I can um, uh, dial in my color settings. 
So first thing I want to do, we'll go straight to the printer settings from here. You can use the um, the Epson uh, status monitor uh, icon, right click it, and then you can click on printer settings and that'll get you there. Or you can go to um, your printer and scanners. Here, I'll go back to it. I went kind of quick. So we can go uh, to your search bar and you can type in printers, scanners, or just printers and it'll pop up. So here's our 2720 series right here. We'll go ahead and click on that and we'll click manage and you can go to printing preferences and that'll get you back to that same prop, uh, window as well. So we'll close this one out and now we're on this one. Actually, we'll close both of these out. There we go. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is set up a uh, profile for the paper that I use, the A Sub uh, 120G, and also the Dynamite Gorilla Sublimation Ink that I use. So what I'm going to do is um, <clears throat> go here to the document size. I use the legal size, so that's eight and a half by fourteen. Uh, I print in landscape. And this is going to be a color profile, so I'll keep this uh, ticked on color here. We're going to go to our More Options tab here. We're going to click Off High Speed and make sure that Mirror Image is checked. I'm going to go over here to uh, my color correction, and I'm going to type on, uh, click on the Custom Radio button here. I'm going to click on Advanced. Um, I like to stay in the Epson Vivid color mode here. And I just move my slide bars. Uh, I go from uh, color circle to slide bar here. And on my cyan, I'm going to type in 2. My magenta, I'm going to type in negative uh, 20. And on my yellow, I'm going to type in negative 15. And that'll get me in the ballpark of where I want to be with my colors. Um, this doesn't just work on Dynamite Gorilla Sublimation Ink. It works on all uh, sublimation inks that I've used um, when I use the Epson Vivid profile. So I click OK here. All right, and in my maintenance tab, I like to do this. Um, some people like the status monitor. I don't, so I'm just gonna uh, disable it here in my settings here and I'll click OK. Uh, once I do that, I'm going to go back here to more options and we're going to uh, lock in those settings that we just did. So we'll go to add, remove pro, uh, presets. And this is my uh, A sub 120G legal um, it's an Epson Vivid profile. Alright. And I'm going to put in my settings here. All right, so these are all the settings in case I need to go back, change any of these, uh, any of these uh, numbers here, they'll be document it so I know where exactly where I started it. So we'll go ahead and click on save and now I have a preset over here for my Epson Vivid uh, profile. So we can hit close. I'm actually going to make another one real quick and this is just going to be for my black and white my black and white prints. And when I do it this way I don't have to worry about the printer trying to mix colors to make black it'll only use the black sublimation ink that's in there. So this one, we'll go ahead and save this one as this is my black and white setting. And for this one, we'll use one of these black and white icons here. Like that. So close that down, and now we have two of these color, or well, two two profiles uh, for the Epson 120G. 
So we'll click OK. And now we're done with that. So now it's time to do a print. I'm going to work on some um, 3D license, um, not, sorry, 3D license plates, 3D phone cases here. So I'm going to open up Photoshop and then we'll go ahead and get into um, designing those phone cases. Go ahead. I think I'll try uh, this one. And it's my Tribe Call Quest um, phone case that I was working on. Uh, let me see. This is for my two and one. I would just go ahead and print this one out. So what we'll do is we'll go to File. We'll go to Print. And normally I wouldn't uh, waste all. You know what? I'm not going to waste it. Let's go ahead and back out of here. What we'll do is we will create a new template here. We'll select that, copy all, and there we go. So now what we'll do is we'll try to get as many as we can on here. Just basically, I copied it and then I just pasted it onto an eight and a half by 14 blank canvas. And we're going to try to get this all spaced out on here. So let's see if I can scoot this over. There we go. All right. All right, so now I should have all three of those images on one sheet of paper. So when I go to print, and we switch to our new printer that we just installed, here it is up here. So now on that eight and a half by 14 sheet of paper, we should be able to get three of those images on there. So let's go ahead and print these. All right, so it's printing now. Now we're gonna be printing on this two-piece phone case. It has a rubber insert that goes over the phone and then a hard plastic shell that goes on top of that. And that's what we're gonna be transferring our image to. So we'll get our image cut out and place our case on the mold. We'll get our image taped up really good to the case. We'll insert it into our shrink wrap sleeve and apply heat to get it as tight as possible. And once we get it shrink wrapped, we're gonna put it in the convection oven, which has been preheated to approximately 400 degrees. We're gonna let that sit in there for about 10 minutes. Now you should start to see the image through the shrink wrap. We're gonna take it out and cut the wrap and the tape off of the mold. We're going to take off the paper. Now these phone cases are made for vacuum sublimation presses, but with some work, it could be done without the vacuum presses. Once I get more comfortable with the method, I'll make another video going over the process in more detail. And we'll remove the case from the mold and place it in a bucket of cold water for a couple of minutes to let it contract. We'll take the case out of the water and assemble the case and put it on the phone. And there it is, that's how I set up the EcoTank printers for sublimation. Again, if you're looking for a quick and easy way to get into sublimation, you can definitely do that with the EcoTank printers and the Dynamite Gorilla Sublimation Ink. Thanks for checking out the video. I'll try to simplify this process and hopefully post another video on it shortly. And if you already have an ET2720 set up and you felt like I missed something in the video, comment below so that others can see it and they don't make the same mistakes. And thank you for all of the support and until next time, good luck 
and good night.